everyone. Thank you very much for being with us this Sunday afternoon. I have a statement that I would like to read to you, and I'm sure that uh, our colleagues in the rooms behind me, when they meet at 3 o'clock, they will also will be listening to this statement. And I want to thank you know, my brother, uh, Ambassador Magid Abdelaziz, the Ambassador of the League of Arab States, for being with us. And also we requested, as the State of Palestine, an emergency meeting of the League of Arab States at the level of foreign ministers in Cairo in the next few days. <clears throat> Regrettably, history for some media and politicians start when Israelis are killed. Our people have endured one deadly year after another. We came to the Security Council month after month, warning of the consequences of Israeli impunity and international inaction. Last October, about a year ago, we stated before the Security Council the Palestinian people will be free one day or another, one way or another. We chose the peaceful way, the one the international community advocates for. Do not let Israel prove us wrong for our sake and theirs. This is not a time to let Israel double down on its terrible choices. This is a time to tell Israel it needs to change course, that there is a path to peace where neither Palestinians nor Isra Israelis are killed. And it is the one diametrically opposed to the one Israel is embarked on. Israel keeps saying the blockade and repeated assaults on Gaza are to destroy Hamas, military capabilities, and ensure security. Clearly and, ex and expectedly, its blockade and assaults accomplished neither. The only thing they did accomplish was inflicting terrible suffering on an entire civilian population. It is time for an immediate end to the violence and the bloodshed, and it is time to end this blockade and to open a political horizon. When Israel now tries to justify yet another assault by the same faulty premise, no one should say or do anything to encourage it down this path. We know only too well that the messages about Israel's right to defend itself will be interpreted by Israel as license to kill, to pursue on the very path that led us here. 370 and the number is rising by the moment of Palestinians that have been killed already in one day, including children, some barely a few months old. Entire families were killed in their sleep. Will this bring security? Will this advance peace? Where is the international protection the Palestinian people is entitled to when the occupying power violates international law and harms those it is obliged to protect? Aren't Palestinians' lives worth saving? The Palestinian civilians killed, the Palestinian children killed in occupied Palestine could have been spared. 
Isn't that a moral and legal obligation and a contribution to peace? Why nothing is done when those killed are Palestinians? We need to think hard of what logic we want to see prevail here. If this is about vengeance, then many Palestinians will feel they have much to avenge. If this is about peace, then the way to it is not through further entrenching oppression and occupation, but by ending it. You cannot say nothing justifies killing Israelis and then provide justification for killing Palestinians. We are not subhumans. Let me repeat, we are not subhumans. We will never accept a rhetoric that den denigrates our humanity and reneges our rights. A rhetoric that ignores the occupation of our land and oppression of our people. There is no right to security that trumps the right of a nation to self-determination. The fulfillment of our right to self-determination is the only path towards shared peace and security. We chose the peaceful path to achieve our rights, but Israel continued using blunt force against Palestinian lives and Palestinian rights. Israel cannot wage a full-scale war on a nation, its people, its land, its holy sites, and expect peace in exchange. One needs to address the root causes of the conflict. And by doing so, we will be addressing its consequences. We have been calling for a different rationale, a different approach, justice, not vengeance, freedom, not occupation, peace, not war. Our calls should be heeded. The alternative is playing out under our very eyes. Israel has announced dozens of times that it had handled the Palestinian problem by war against our people or peace with others since 1948 till a few days ago in the statement of Netanyahu in front of the General Assembly. Netanyahu held during that speech in these United Nations a map denying the existence of Palestine, a map of aggression and annexation. To all the peacemakers, to all those who believe in the UN Charter and international law, one cannot lose sight of the bigger picture. We need to stand up for the vision enshrined in the resolution of the Security Council and the General Assembly, and to take the necessary measures to ensure compliance with their provisions. We need to uphold international law, not abandon it. Everybody in the room behind me, who will be meeting in a few minutes, agree on the end game. Israel expects and demands political and military support while advancing goals that are fundamentally at odds with international legitimacy and consensus. Its policies are an assault on our humanity, on international law, on peace, and are a threat for its own people. Can those supporting Israel ignore its colonialist and racist agenda? That would be self-defeating. A different path is possible. I repeat, a different path is possible. 
but it cannot ignore the lives and rights of the Palestinian people. It must guarantee them equal measures of freedom and security. You cannot stand for peace if you do not stand up to occupation. Do it because it is the right thing to do, morally, legally, politically, and because it will save lives. Peace will save lives because it is the only way forward. I thank you very much. We have copies for those who are interested to give it to you. Thank you. Yes, yes.